Welcome to NCLEX Map, your ultimate guide to mastering nursing judgment and clinical excellence. Today we're diving into a vital nursing skill, intravenous medication administration using primary and secondary lines. Let's start with safety. Pause and perform the five rights. Right patient, right drug, right dose, right route, and right time. Check for allergies and confirm Y-Site compatibility using trusted references like Trissel's or your hospital's system. Always scrub the hub for at least 10 to 15 seconds. Practice hand hygiene and never bypass the drug library. 95% DERS compliance is the national standard for safety, so let's keep that in mind. Next, gather everything you need. Primary IV solution, primary tubing, secondary medication bag, and your smart pump. Inspect all fluids and tubing for clarity, integrity, and expiration before connecting anything. Now, let's prime the primary line, spike the primary bag, fill the drip chamber halfway, and prime the tubing completely. Remove all air bubbles and label the tubing with the date, time, and your initials. If your patient already has a running line, Check patency and site integrity first. For the secondary line, you can prime it traditionally or by back priming. In traditional priming, hang the secondary bag higher, spike it, and fill the drip chamber halfway. For back priming, connect the dry secondary tubing to the upper Y site and let the primary solution back fill the secondary tubing. Always close the clamp before raising the secondary bag again. Remember, head height matters. Hang the secondary bag at least 9.5 inches higher than the primary bag for proper flow. For Alaris pumps, both bags should ideally be about 20 inches above the pump module. Now, connect the secondary tubing to the upper Y site above the pump and trace all lines from bag to patient. This simple tracing step prevents serious medication errors, so don't skip it. Let's program the pump. On Alaris 8100, choose the drug from the Guardrails drug library and tap Secondary Mode. Enter the dose, rate, and volume to be infused, then confirm your secondary clamp is open and start the infusion. You'll see secondary running displayed, which means you're on the right track. On Sigma Spectrum, select the drug from the library, tap Secondary Infusion, and enter your VTBI and rate. Make sure the secondary is higher and the clamp is open. Then hit Run and verify secondary flow visually in the drip chamber. Once complete, the primary automatically resumes. That's the hallmark of proper setup. Always stay with your patient for the first one to two minutes to confirm flow and check the IV site for infiltration or phlebitis. When the infusion ends, ensure the primary restarts and flush if required. Document the drug, dose, start and stop time, patient response, and any pump alerts. Now, let's talk about common pitfalls to avoid. A closed secondary clamp means your medication never runs. If the secondary is hung lower than the primary, flow stops, and using the wrong Y site can disrupt sequencing. Missing a back check valve can lead to fluid backflow, and ignoring compatibility can cause precipitation. Skipping disinfection raises infection risk, so pay attention to these details. Quick recap. Verify the order, check compatibility, prime both lines correctly, and hang the secondary higher. Connect to the right port, program using the smart pump's Yaw secondary function, and monitor, flush, and document. Every step reflects the precision and accountability nursing demands. IV medication administration is more than a task. It's a critical thinking process that blends safety, science, and skill. Mastering it ensures you protect your patient and your license. Thank you for watching NCLEX Map, where knowledge becomes confident nursing judgment. If you found this guide helpful, like, subscribe, and share to support future nurses mastering clinical excellence. Until next time, stay sharp, stay safe, and keep mapping your way to NCLEX success.